Hello, fellow detectives. Welcome to Unlocked, the official podcast for all things Nancy Drew by Her Interactive. I'm your host, Tammy Tucky, and this week we welcome voiceover artist Sarah Mountjoy Pepka to the show. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. It's great to talk to somebody who's played both sides of the spectrum in a Nancy Drew character. I'm talking about bad guy, good guy. Um, <laughs> but before we kind of talk about that primarily, I thought we'd learn about your background background in the entertainment industry like what inspired you to jump in and be an actress sure um I, it's actually kind of a backwards story i um <laughs> i was a a music major in college i was a bassoonist um and i had done a little bit of theater in high school but for the most part i was pursuing classical music and one of the things i had done was i had worked with um this mime company in high school um that works with orchestras just because they had worked with my youth orchestra and um, I was in college, and that mime company, Magic Circle Mime, um, happened to be working with the Chicago Symphony. I was in Chicago at the time, and I just thought I'd go down and, you know, see the show and say hello to them. And part of that was because uh, my boyfriend at the time was um, subbing with the Chicago Symphony, so I can kind of tell thank you to him. Um, <laughs> down to see him perform and I uh, watched the mime show and by the time the hour was over I was like oh I'm I'm quitting bassoon and I'm becoming an actor or at least I'm becoming a mime um, and so I finished my degree but by the time I was done with my degree I would I had started performing professionally with that mime company um, and then I moved back to Seattle to work with them more and while I was there I was like oh you know it'd be I'll probably um, make friends if I uh if I uh, do some improv classes, because I'd started to do that just to make friends, and I started improv, and then I got into the um, the, the main ensemble um, with Unexpected Productions Seattle Theater Sports in Seattle. And while I was there, I was like, oh, I guess it'd be a good idea for me to start auditioning for theater, because that would help my improv. So I did that, and then as I was auditioning for theater, I ended up being approached by an agent, and I was like, oh, yeah, sure, I can... <laughs> do that and um six years later i'm in los angeles aggressively pursuing my uh my performance career so i i kind of walked backwards into um every step of the process of being a performer <laughs> i came about it naturally that's for sure it wasn't um it wasn't anything that anybody pushed on me i just kind of fell into it um because i i I was like, oh, I like this aspect. Oh, I like this aspect. Oh, oh, okay, good to know. So it was just kind of this slow unraveling. Um, I have done a lot of wonderful things. Um, I think one of the highlights for me was a um, a musical in Seattle that was um, written for myself and a friend of mine by um, by a good friend, Scott O'Moore, um, and he does. Um, mostly sci-fi. He's a big geek and sci-fi guy, and I am a big um, geek and sci-fi person. And so um, he wrote this musical where I was the lead, and I played this scientist who discovered this new hyper-intelligent strain of mice. Um, and my my one of my best friends, Kay Brian Neal, played my mouse. Um, and so it was a musical that had puppet work because we had this this really goofy-looking mouse puppet. Um, and it was so much fun to get to do musical theater that was highly scientific. Like the, I don't, I don't think I could spout off the lyrics at this point, but it was like long strings of, you know, this is how the, you know, this is how the genetic code worked. And this is, you know, like the, the, um, the, the way in which I approached this in the laboratory. And it was, it was so much fun to, um, meld kind of the science sci-fi part of my brain with, um, with the theater part. And now in Los Angeles, um, I'm a massive Trekkie and I direct and I perform um, improvised Star Trek The Next Generation. And that I think is, it, it's the same um, field of what I enjoy most where we are 
fully committed to performing um, Star Trek TNG, and, and we really get into the scientific terms, and, and improvising scientific terminology is just a joy for me to do. Like, I study my, tech, my technical manual, but most of the time, you know, what comes out of your mouth is garbage, and then you have to <laughs> justify it. And I just, I, I don't know, I really enjoy that. I think I'm very left-brained in many ways, and so it's great when my massively left brain gets to interact with the kind of right brain part of um, my creative pursuits. And before we move forward, I just want to let our listeners know we will be talking about spoilers. So if you have never played the Captive Curse or the Deadly Device, I suggest going to play those games before listening to the rest of this interview. Only a heads up. So let's talk about The Captive Curse because that's the first one. This one takes place in Germany and there's a monster and and nobody knows who the monster is or if it's real. I really like this game because I thought, you know, the castle part of it looked beautiful and we had such a odd group of characters in it. And you played uh, Anya in this one. I really loved this character in particular because she's like, she knows what she's talking about. She's basically running the place while the person who owns the building is away. So when you were asked to audition for a character for this game, was it did they tell you specifically they wanted Anya as the character you that they that they wanted you to audition for or was it just can you give us some you know some characters that you can work on or you can or you can portray and and then we can see what your fit is for this particular yeah. game um i do remember specifically auditioning for Anya um because i remember um uh, I had never done a German accent before. And so I had to kind of throw together the, the best German accent I could in about um, two days. And it was fun because I got to go audition in person, which is kind of unusual for um, voiceover work. The vast majority of voiceover work, you audition um, like into your computer in your closet. Um <laughs> So, and so it was, it was, it was nice to be able to go and do it in in person. And I remember that, um, my German accent kind of depended on a lot of like body physical stuff I was doing as well. So I probably looked like a crazy person, um, auditioning, but it, it was a lot of fun to put together. I, I imagine I also auditioned for the other characters, but Anya is the one that, I actually have like the memory of doing. How much did you know about the character in particular? Because this character is the bad guy and a lot of the other voiceover artists say they never know what the ending is until it comes to that point. And if they're the bad guy, they they know, they find out. Or if they're not, they have no idea. So in particular, how was that, how was that worked around with you? Um, that's exactly what happened. I had no idea that she was the villain until we got to that moment in the recording session. And I remember I stopped and I went, what? <laughs> I was like, and it was probably good because if I had known she was the villain from the beginning, I probably would have, you know, inadvertently tried to play her villainy. Um, but I did not I, and what's funny too is, um, I, in my head, my picture of Anya was that she was this like craggly old woman, like, like a, like a, a, you know, like a, a nice hefty old German woman in clogs and, and kind of like a, you know, scraggly crooked nose and a little cap on. And so I didn't know that I was playing, um, a, a young woman until I actually, um, played the game much later and I was like oh she's she's my age she's she's a young woman and so like between not knowing that she was the villain and having no clue that she was supposed to be young I it it was um a series of unfolding surprises from start to finish I'm not a huge gamer although I um I do enjoy it The, the the the, the most gaming I have ever done is um, playing uh, King's Quest, which is a very similar series to the Nancy Drew series. Um, 
I think they started to come out around the same time and I played them with my brother. And there's a, a troll character in King's Quest Seven, And I think in my head, I just decided that Anya was that character because like the, the in my head, the pixels look the same and like the, the, um, the animation looks the same as that old lady troll character in King's Quest Seven. So I think I think my brain just like filled something in for me, and I operated based on that for for lack of any other knowledge. You know, it's it's funny what your brain does. How long do you think that the main recording session for that specific game took for you? I think it took two days. I think we did it over the course of two days. It was long. There was. She had um, a lot of dialogue. Um, and, you know, a lot of it is um, all of the different variations, obviously. And so, you know, you can have a line that's only off by one or two words, but you have to record every single variation of it. But it was like two days of three hours each. Um and it was it was fun because uh, um, the producers were there and um, Jin Hammond was there, who um, is a beautiful voice actor in Seattle. She's done a lot of um, really big video games and she was there kind of um, course correcting my my uh, my German accent as we went. Um, and thank God, too, because if she hadn't been there, I don't know, I, I think what I was producing is probably offensive to the German people. Um, <laughs> so she was tweaking me as I went. Um, actually, it'd be funny for me to see whether like Anya's accent changes from the beginning of the game to the end of the game. <laughs> Thanks to Jin's corrections. Who knows? I, I tend to be somebody who um, I'm not only transparently honest, I'm sometimes like more honest than I need to be. Like I'm 120% honest. And so for me, like on my resume, I don't have any accents. I, I do not state that, you know, I can do a single because I'm like, well, I'm not a native speaker and I was not born and raised in that country. And so, you know, what I, what I do might not be absolutely perfect versus, you know, like another actor might have 20 accents listed on their resume and it's just, you know, like the most bogus accent ever, but I'm, I'm too scared to, uh, to present anything that I know isn't, um, you know, like completely ready to go. Um, and so I, yeah, accents, accents make me nervous for sure. I mean, um, I do, uh, improvise Jane Austen, and um, I have to obviously do a, a, a British, um, you know, RP accent for that. And um, I have to really warm myself up into the accent. Like if I know I'm doing a show, I have to spend the entire day warming myself up into the accent because I don't want to get on stage and just start chewing all over my, my words. Um, I take it very seriously. <laughs> when you finally got to hear yourself in the game, when you played it, what did you think overall? I mean, I, I was delighted and horrified because I would hear tiny inconsistencies in the accent and I'd be like, oh no, I, uh. but like you said, I mean, like, you know, m most players, most viewers, they aren't sitting there listening, like I'm going to dissect this person's accent. You know, it's like not what we're thinking when we're playing a game, we're just, we're enjoying the story. So I was able to, um, uh, enjoy it all the way through. And then I, I would have like little notes for myself um, on occasion. And when I say all the way through, I actually um, have not finished the game and I, I still intend to, I just haven't yet. Like I said, I'm not a huge gamer. Um, so I started, I was like, oh, this is awesome. But I usually play games with my brother up in Seattle. And so it's, it's like always like a slow, like we can spend years playing one game because we refuse to play. Um, the game when we aren't with each other. So we're like slowly ticking away. <laughs> and then they call you back for the deadly device as Ellie York. So you're not, you're not doing an accent this time around. <laughs> you get to kind of play your own voice a mm -hmm. little bit. So when they described this character, what did they initially tell you about her? Um, I remember they said she was, um, she was really smart. 
And um, I decided for that audition to literally not try to do anything except for my own voice. Um, because I, I, I'm, I'm never going to be smarter than I am. I'm never going to be, um, dumber than I am. I, I can only hope that, you know, what I present is intelligent enough. Um, and so for that audition, that was a far less stressful audition and a very easy recording process because I basically, um, just decided that Ellie was me and, and me was Ellie. Um, so all of the, the, you know, any inflection or any mannerism that you hear in Ellie is, le- that's Sarah. <laughs> it's just legitimately Sarah. And the good news about that is she's not the bad guy. <laughs> yes, I know. So- and I was like waiting till the, like that time I was prepared because I, I, um, I, that, that game came out after Captive Curse. And so I went into the recording session going, all right, what's going to happen? You know, <laughs> are we going to find out? And I was like, oh no, she's. She's just the character. I'll, so you found I'll, out that she wasn't. So you found out that she wasn't the bad guy. But did they tell you who was the bad guy? No, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't tell me anything. Ooh. Nothing at all. So yeah. did you play that game to find out who it was? No, I haven't played that game yet. And again, I still. It's like it's still on my bucket list. Um, but I only get to see my brother about um, you know maybe like five or six days out of the year. So we we really do just like chip away slowly over the course of the years. So it's it's on the list. Like we have it downloaded on our Steam account, um, ready to go. Just we're not there yet, unfortunately. Well, won't, we won't talk any more about it because I want you to enjoy it. So have you auditioned for any more Nancy Drew games recently or would you consider doing another game? Um, I would love to do another game. I um, left Seattle three and a half years ago and um, her interactive is based in Seattle. So um, I don't know that, uh, you know, unless they pick up and move to Los Angeles, I probably (laughs) will not. But if there were, um, if there were ever a way for me to do it, I would love to. Um, I I really love Nancy Drew. Um, I grew up reading Nancy Drew. Um, I think she's such a a great smart role model. I actually do improvised Nancy Drew here in Los Angeles as well. I do a lot of improv. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, I That's do a lot great. of genre <laughs> improv here. And um I I like that Nancy never questions her intelligence. I think um in that way she is such a fantastic um role model and leader for young women and she never apologizes for her intelligence either. And so often, um, you know, in, in rom-coms and stories, we, we have, you know, if we do have a, a smart female character, she has some other flaw, you know, like a classic rom-com, you've got this, you know, type A Sandra Bullock type character who is, you know, got it all put together and she's a lawyer and she's great, but um, she's terrible at love or she's, you know, Um, super closed down and can't let anybody in. And there's always this asterisk that comes along with um, being smart. And Nancy is one of the only characters I have ever seen who is, who is really, you know, just, I'm smart. I'm beautiful. um, I love Ned. Uh, (laughs) I have my friends. I have my convertible and everything is great. Um, And there's something there's something both, you know, hilariously, um, uh, you know, like almost impossible about that, but also very refreshing about that because Nancy, Nancy is awesome and, and she doesn't apologize for it. And I wish we all presented ourselves that way. Um, you know, I, I consider myself to be an intelligent person, but I still find the places in which I, um, apologize for it or in, in which I, you know, clarify. I'm like, well, this is, this is my opinion, but, uh, you know, I could be wrong. No, I'm not wrong. I know that that's right. You know, I, I wish I could, I wish I would, I would always just, you know, when I know I'm right, flat out say that I'm right. So I, I love Nancy and, um, it was, it was an honor and a pleasure to do these games because of that. Would you mind telling everybody your website address so they can go ahead and check out your page? Because there is more of what Sarah has done. So, you should definitely take a look. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's um, it's sarahmountjoypepka.com, and I'll spell that because it's a handful. 
um, S-A-R-A-M-O-U-N-T-J-O-Y. P-E-P-K-A.com. I'm also on um, Twitter and Instagram where I post um, a lot of, you know, the things that I've got going on. And now those handles are both S Mount Joy Pepka, um, same spelling, no hyphen. It was such a pleasure to talk with you today, Sarah. And my last question is if you could describe your experience working with her interactive and being a part of the Nancy Drew universe using one word, what would that be? delightful. 